Now, hello, I am Disbrew, and this week in news we start with something that I should probably just put in every week, and that is that Call of Duty's broken again. Yes, this week Season 2 launched, and it just broke everything. Caldera was crashing, and Xbox players couldn't even get into it. Now, honestly, as much as I would love to blame this on Caldera, quite frankly, I just want Verdansk back. I can't, unfortunately, do that because, yeah, Vanguard was broken too. Uh, the ranked play that they just added in, yes, it's admittedly beta, but... You kind of expect it to work. I don't care whether it's a beta or not. Beta means you might have small issues. Being unable to play it seems like a pretty major one. And honestly, at this point, I kind of question what on earth are they doing? Every single patch seems to have introduced something that is completely and utterly game-breaking. Visual books, I'm quite lenient on, but you should at least be able to play the game. It's kind of a fundamental part of actually being a game developer, and yet this is something that Activision isn't very strong on. And the fact that Microsoft looked at this company, who has so many studios working on one game who just constantly break it and uh, the fact they bought it still kind of amazes me but hopefully over time this might improve maybe with warzone 2 hey I, you wouldn't think you'd have to release an entirely new game just to fix your old one but that's the state we're in i don't know what started this wild ride but i really want to get off the amount of games which are being converted into tv series and movies at this point is astronomical and uh having seen what happens to beloved ips i just I really need it to stop at this point. Amazon signs a deal with studio producing Disco Elysium and Life of Strange shows. Then we've got Netflix coming in with a Bioshock movie. On top of that, Amazon is making a Blade Runner TV series, not a game, but hey, it's just another one to add to the list. Amazon signs a huge gaming show, TV show deal with Sonic the Hedgehog producer, not to actually to make Sonic stuff, but a various number of PC and console blockbusters will be coming to the small screen. That'll be fun. Knuckles is getting his own TV series, this time from Paramount, and the Halo TV show has been renewed for a season two, even though season one hasn't existed yet. Honestly, if this had happened 10 to 15 years ago, I couldn't be happier, but right now, I am very, very cautious about all of our IPs going over to the TV series and seeing what's happened to other things. I remember the days when lots of gaming IPs were made into movies and they were universally awful. Yeah, Max Payne anyone, and I just don't want it to happen again this time for a longer time period over an entire TV series. It's not looking good, but hey, maybe there's hope? Maybe? Please tell me there's hope. The Nintendo Switch has been a massive success, but it looks like Nintendo wants to take that record and just smash all the rest of them as well. You see, they say that the Switch has broken its understanding of a conventional hardware life cycle. It's not getting a successor anytime soon. Despite exceeding their 90 million expected units and being around for five years already, they've said that the system is at the midpoint of its life cycle. And honestly, I'm kind of surprised by this. Coming from the PC space, having something for five years, you're normally like, okay, this is really pushing it. I don't know whether I can get a little bit more out of it. But to plan to go for 10 would be completely impossible to do. And despite my personal preferences for them, I can't help thinking, eh, they must be onto something. When you have a console like that that just keeps smashing records, and one which has admittedly made $60 billion in revenue already, at the end of the day, who am I to disagree, right? It's clearly working for them. They've got an art style that works, a graphic style that works, and they've got a customer base which is very happy with the content they're being provided. So, hey, customer base is happy with what they're getting, and they made $60 billion already. I have to say, that kind of blows any of my arguments out of the water. Battlefield 2042 has kind of stumbled from disaster to disaster, and then even when the company tries to work out why it was a disaster, it just leads to another disaster. They can't catch a break at this point. From X-Fire and Tom Henderson, we found out that EA acknowledges Battlefield 2042's failure with a town hall and post-mortem. The issue was, down further below, he actually mentioned how uh, they spoke about it was cause of Halo. Yes, Battlefield 2042 may have been bugged on launch, but apparently the gamers wouldn't have noticed that as much if Halo Infinite hadn't been so polished. And honestly, calling Halo Infinite polished when one of their game modes didn't even work for three or four months after launch, then uh, that's a really depressing analogy, isn't it? But they did it all the same. The weird thing was how this was the story that came out of the X-Fire article and kind of went all over the press. 
And then EA tried to deny it never happened. Well, not exactly. They didn't quite say that they didn't say it, just that it had been misinterpreted and they weren't blaming Halo. They were just trying to find out the cause of the problems. Except they didn't deny that they'd said that about Halo. Uh, no, they just tried to spin it instead, which I, honestly, I can't believe what they're doing. These stories are not accurately capturing the discussion and the context, which was in depth and very humble internal conversation. Yes, nobody was intended to find out what they were blaming as to why they failed about the recent Battlefield launch. It was about key learnings and actions we were taking. Not blaming external factors, except if they did say those words and they did mention Halo, you were blaming external factors. Oh, people won't realize how bad our game is as long as there isn't something else which is actually good. Uh, I don't know how that's supposed to be except blaming. You're like, oh no, we're just taking accountability by working out what the problem was. It's a distinction without a difference, isn't it? You have to remember this is coming from someone who actually likes the game, but but at this point, come on. I mean, if you want to find out why it's failed, you could just ask the gamers, you know, the ones that either bought it and left or the ones that would really like to play it if you could just sort it out. And you don't seem to be doing much outreach to other people. You can have internal conversations all you want, but internal is what created the game in the first place. So what you'll find internally talking about the game is just decisions from people that made that game in the first place. And I'm not sure how useful that'll actually be. If you want to find why people didn't like the game, talk to the people that didn't like the game, or talk to the people who actually like the game, but would really prefer that you change some major parts of it. Let's get on those maps, shall we? But of all of this, blaming Halo Infinite, even behind closed walls, is not the smartest of ideas, and maybe that's one of the key learnings for next time. Speaking of Halo Infinite, if you're a ranked player, then you can expect that to soon be going down, as Halo Infinite is doing a rank reset in the coming week. Now, you'll probably go down at least a full tier, because 343 says that their current ranking system is overly generous. I think we can all take that as an oops, we messed up our mathematics and too many people have ended up too high. But uh, you would have thought it would be quite simple to do, really, wouldn't you? You would have some kind of arbitrary target that you wanted for each rank, and then you could adjust the difficulty of leveling up, depending on how many people were up there and therefore people would naturally drop out and the best people should rise to the top. I don't know whether this would actually require a full rank reset, but what I think they're scared of is if you actually don't reset the ranks to zero and have people climb up again, then a load of people will drop down and this will inevitably hurt morale and a lot of people might just actually stop playing just because they're attached to their rank and they don't want it to drop. So I can understand why they're doing it and I kind of like the whole you have to climb again on a new season. Just think that doing it at the end of a season rather than in the middle of one would probably be a better idea for them. We may finally be getting a sequel to Dead Island, and I love the first one, but eight years after its reveal, any game that's been in development that long is probably a bit questionable, and it's about as questionable as this kind of hint strongly hints at its release by March 2023. Because he was asked, or at least insinuated at first by someone else, it's very clear that the game is still live. Uh, I expect it to release in the next financial year. And if that's reasonable, what can we expect from a title that's been in development for probably 10 years or so? But he did get this rather cryptic response from the CEO, who says, I can't talk about Dead Island 2 because it's not announced as such from the publisher. But we have just talked about how we have one unannounced AAA title that you think is Dead Island 2, so it's hard for me to comment further on that, but I'm definitely excited about it. And honestly, look, if that guy got it wrong and it wasn't a Dead Island 2, then please just... Put him out of his misery. It's been eight years and you still haven't commented about it when it was revealed in the first place. If it's gone, just tell everyone it's gone. You don't have to leave people hoping till the end of time. Or if it is, then honestly, I don't see any harm in saying that you're actually developing it. Look at Elder Scrolls. We got a title screen for that years ago and have seen nothing since. You certainly wouldn't be alone in the gaming industry. And I, and I am someone who is against announcing games too soon. But let's face it, if you announced this game eight years ago, we're already well past that, and at this point, I think people would just like confirmation one way or the other. The recent acquisitions of Activision Blizzard by Microsoft and Bungie by Sony has led to an interesting space in the gaming industry at the moment, and uh, a lot of companies are being questioned about how come you haven't been bought, which seems unfair to me, but it's exactly what is going on. This is what led to the Ubisoft CEO saying that the company can remain independent, but would consider acquisition offers. During a recent earnings call, Ubisoft was actually forced to defend the fact that it hadn't been offered an offer by one of these major companies. Like, people just expect them to buy every game studio. It's a little bit weird, but they decided to state that while the company isn't desperate for a buyer and can remain independent, 
It also isn't totally opposed to the idea. They say we're always making decisions in the interest of our stakeholders, our employees and shareholders. Ubisoft can remain independent. We have the talent, the industry scale and the large portfolio of popular IPs as you store and lease. Our IPs are highly sought after. Adding to that, if there were an offer to buy us, the board of directors would of course review it in the interests of all stakeholders. Now this does seem to be a rather neutral statement, but could also be deemed to be putting a little bit of bait in the water for an offer themselves. It's like, yeah, hey, we're happy to remain independent because we don't want our stock price to go down, but hey, if anyone's got any of that spare cash running around and you want someone else, we're kind of open to it. And while I don't think that either of the two companies acquiring Ubisoft is particularly likely myself, I do like the idea that this is the state the gaming industry is in now. Now, everybody expects to be bought out, and if you're not being bought out by Sony or Microsoft, everyone sort of questions why and begins to look at you as if, what's, what's wrong with you? It's an odd state of being, and uh, yeah, I don't think anyone saw this coming a few months ago. Cyberpunk 2077 and Witcher 3 Game Director has launched a new game studio called Rebel Wolves. This actually has quite a lot of talent behind it, with developers fanning the Witcher series, Cyberpunk 2077, Thronebreaker, and Shadow Warrior 2, so some major titles among there. While there isn't much information about the game itself, they do say that they aim to become the holy grail of computer RPGs, which seems to be a pretty lofty goal to try on your initial debut title. Interestingly, they say we want to recreate the feeling of pen and paper RPG session, where your options seem limitless and where the world reacts to your choices, where every decision matters. And while this may seem like pretty generic RPG text, the idea of going back to an older form of RPG definitely kind of appeals to me. I really was a big fan of the RPGs like Baldur's Gate that were done, what, in the early 2000s? And there just isn't too many of them around nowadays. Now, they do take a lot of time, and it's not really something I have anymore compared to what I did 20 years ago, but... I kind of want that game to come back, I kind of want that whole aspect to come back, and well, there are some things bringing it back, like Baldur's Gate 3, it's still a relatively underserved section of gaming in my opinion, and one which you could definitely do with some more games, so if a new studio is setting up to actually fill the space, we'll have to see how it turns out in the end, but I do like that we're getting more titles in the future, so it's a win for now. But for now, that's it from me. Let me know what you thought of any of the topics down in the comments below. Like the video if you like the video, and subscribe more videos like this in the future. We do roundups of news every single week. But for now, that's it from me. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.